And we're back to Boulder, Colorado, okay? Troubleshooting, you know the drill. Got to figure out this FKT route, uh, the Boulder Skyline Traverse. It sounds like the time has been dropped down to that 315. I even saw on Twitter today, maybe a 313. For the, for the men, for the Boulder, I think the ladies is like 335, which is just flying. So 313-ish, according to a, a tag that I got on Twitter today. Anyway, so I'm going up, exploring the trail. Remember, it's like even though I didn't get it done the first time, now I have the opportunity and the chance to go explore again, figure it out. So that's what we're doing today in the Wild Horse 6. First eight miles is gonna be in the Wild Horse 6, and then we're switching over to the Terra Kiger 6. There they are, the trail racing shoe from Nike. And uh, so I, okay, if you remember my full review from 2019 of the Terra Kiger 5, I was not crazy about the toe box. I thought the toe box was a little sloppy, a little too much material. So I'm really excited to give this shoe a shot today. And obviously just to give you like some basic comparisons between the Wild Horse and the Terra Kiger of 2020. Sound good? We're back in Boulder, beautiful Boulder, Colorado. Uh, let's lace up and it is blazing hot out. We got to get rolling. Okay, here we go. Brilliant, everybody. So I found the Ranger Trail. I, this is the exact point where I took the wrong turn uh, about 10 days ago on the Boulder Skyline Traverse. Feel real confident now about how to connect Green Mountain with Flagstaff Mountain. That is where I got lost, yeah, about 10 days ago. So here we go. And, and craziness, I, I literally just passed eight miles. So I'm going to switch from the Wild Horse Sixes into the Terra Kigers to give you my thoughts. Very basic first impressions back at the studio. Let's change it up and then head back to the car. Oh my goodness, feels good. Uh, feels good to, to, to fail and then to come back and figure it out, strategize, figure it out. So, all right, let's find a spot. And we're back from Boulder, Colorado with a Terra Kiger 6. All right, everyone, so here's real quick. I was just importing footage, and by, let me take this vest off. I was importing footage in the house, and uh, I was laughing inside because I think it's time. The corona hair is getting a little too crazy, and I don't know about you if you can relate, a little too hot as the temperatures rise in the northern hemisphere. Like I, I really like to try and control my, my temperature, my body temperature when I'm out running for a long time and the hair is just getting a little, a little hot out there. Let's uh, get the Wild Horse 6s 
full review time. We went to 50 miles, 50 miles on the dot before I switched over to the Terra Kiger 6, as you saw out on the trail. And here is the Wild Horse 5 from 2019. I'll come back to that shoe in one second. We're gonna put the six there and this light is working. So we're gonna put the Wild Horse 5 there, put the Atreyu down there. And yes, a package did arrive when I was out and about in Boulder. Oh my goodness. Speaking of uh, speaking of Atreyu, wait a minute, what is going on here? Oh my goodness, this is amazing. Okay, this okay. Our gratitude lies within is what it's a card. I won't read it right now, but look at that. Atreyu is so I published their full review of their it's a brand new running shoe company out of austin texas as it says right on the card here and their full review published what was it three days ago four days ago so anyway look at that oh i like the gold and black cu colors go buffs go buffs so i love that thank you atreyu in fact you know what why not let's throw it on right now now before we dive into the full review of the wild horse six real briefly on the terra kiger six and this is not my first impression i will do the drop the weight all of that the price point in a vlog probably this weekend or early next week but i will just mention that they nailed it they they fixed the toe box and i i don't know exactly how they changed it because the terra kiger five uh is inside in the house in Michael's room and he's taking a nap right now and you parents out there know don't wake a sleeping baby or a sleeping toddler definitely so I can't give you the full analysis of the toe box but bottom line it felt way better um, today the 2020 iteration as far as the toe box is concerned here we go wild horse six time 30 millimeter stack height in the heel 22 millimeter in the forefoot for that eight millimeter drop for men's size nine we're looking at 10 point five ounces or 297 grams for women size eight we're looking at nine ounces even or 255 grams and there it is on your screen in my size men's seven and a half all right so there you go there's the basic specs on the wild horse six now after 50 miles in the wild horse six over some pretty intense terrain that i took this shoe through i'm not noticing any tears in the upper okay so that is a good sign i think the resilience of the upper is there We'll see what happens with the vamp of the shoes that's right on the side of the toe box here. I'm seeing a little bit of creasing and that sometimes can lead to little holes, but right now at 50 miles, it's good to go. Overlays were good. Um, the shoe even did pretty well when I took it through some snow up on Gray's Peak. I uh, didn't feel, I think the overlays kept the snow out pretty well. I didn't get into major creek crossings. I do apologize on that, but um, overall, I think keeping the water out and the elements out was solid, including the biggest update to the uh, upper uh, from the Wild Horse 5 to the Wild Horse 6 has to be this built-in gator. I was very skeptical pulling it out of the box, but I like it. I like it a lot. Actually, you know, I never felt, I can't, you know, in 50 miles, I never felt a rock inside the shoe. So I think that's a pretty good little design they have there. It adds a little weight to the shoe, but, um, and it was very comfortable, this collar wrapping around the ankle. Uh, gusseted tongue, fully gusseted tongue, just so you know. I'm learning more and more about semi-gusseted tongues and fully gusseted. This is a fully gusseted tongue and the lockdown over the midfoot, amazing amazing and i find oh yeah i do remember from my first impression that uh my toes were going a little numb through the toe box and i was worried that the the toe box was a little narrow but uh i think it was because it was my first real trail run in a long time and my toes just weren't used to climbing sure enough like that uh, numbness went away uh, after the first run in the wild horse six overall i'm very pleased with the upper and the performance in the yeah the upper of the wild horse six and for that midsole we've got a react foam we've got a rock plate and the rock plate did well i didn't feel even on today's run which got really rocky it surprised me how rocky the ranger trail was and i didn't feel any rocks poking uh the bottom of my foot so that was good news um and then i'm gonna come back to this here in a minute wrapping around the heel counter um i will say okay hoka fans out there 
You know what this shoe is screaming at me is that it's feeling the ride is feeling like a Speed Goat 4, okay? Not the Evo Speed Goat, but the Speed Goat 4 as far as just the overall cushion through the midsole. All right? So if you're a fan of the Speed Goat 4 line or the Speed Goat lineup, especially the Speed Goat 4, you might enjoy the Wild Horse 6, okay? That's kind of the feel that I'm getting as far as cushion and ride through the midsole. And onto the outsole, they updated the outsole as well from the Wild Horse 5 to the 6. They reduced the amount of lugs on the bottom of the outsole, but made them a little bigger, and they did fine. Now, again, I didn't get to take this shoe to the top of a 14er, but I think really aggressive trails I would probably want a little more lug depth, but at the same time, I think this shoe allows you to, to explore trails that are not quite as aggressive, a little more buffed out because that tread pattern, uh, the lug depth is not crazy deep. And then as far as, okay, in Colorado, we don't have that much mud here. It's, a, it's an arid climate, but if you live on the East Coast or Washington or anywhere in the world where there's a lot of mud, uh, just so you know, this uh, outsole rubber is supposed to be anti-clogging. How they, you know, technologically wise, tech, technolog, tech, <laughs> technologically wise, I don't know how they're doing that from a scientific level, like how, but I must say, like I never experienced any mud uh, caking. I, I ran through a little bit of mud, but not that much. So anyway, keep that in mind. If you do, if you do live in a really muddy area, is that the rubber is supposed to keep the mud off of, from clogging up on the bottom of the Wild Horse 6. For the fit and the comfort on the Wild Horse 6, fit perfect, true to size, uh, just really spot on as far as the fit goes. Comfort wise, it's epic. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Really comfortable upper, and I'll just dive into my positive right now. The positive is the collar combination with the lockdown through the midfoot, just really spot on. It just, it, you, I didn't feel um, I didn't feel like I was going to fall out of the shoe, it, but it, and it was a comfortable lockdown as well, which is nice for long trail running days. And yes, a nice ride through that midsole. Okay, I will say my drawback is Nike. Um, I think their shoes have a little bit of flash to them. They go for the uh, eye candy appeal. So when you look at the shoe online or you look at the shoe in a running shoe store, it's like, ooh, that, that kind of jumps out at you. You know, this looks different. And I think sometimes Nike shoes can look good to the detriment of performance, meaning they can shave off. In fact, I might have to do a little surgery on this shoe at some point. They can shave off this React foam here, wrap it around the heel, wrap, you know, on the medial and the lateral side, and just save some weight on the shoe. In fact, I might have to do that, actually. Um, so I, that's my drawback, is that I think this is just not necessary, okay? It's just, it just, it looks kind of cool, but it's just not necessary. How will I use this shoe moving forward, and who is this shoe best for? Moving forward, I, initially I thought more aggressive trails, and I do, I still think it can do well on aggressive trails, but I'm also now leaning in the direction of long days. I'm talking, if I was training for a 100 mile race right now, 100 mile trail race, I would take this shoe out for 25 miles, 30 miles easily. I would do, I would go the distance in the shoe for a long uh, trainer getting ready for long ultra races. Absolutely. That's the type of ride and feel that I'm getting through the midsole just to protect the legs and feet a little bit on those longer days out on the trail. And who is this shoe best for? Again, someone who um, is okay to, you know, is ready to climb, uh, you know, more aggressive trails, but doesn't want to sacrifice uh, comfort. Okay. Again, I keep going back to that word. Ding, ding, ding. Comfort, comfort, comfort. It's just a really comfortable shoe, which if you, if you like that in your trail running shoes, I think this could be a good option for you and the price point. Oh my goodness. Nine to $7. Now I think that is the coronavirus price point. Okay. Initially it was coming in at $130, but that's like, that's epic. In fact, the Wild Horse 7 in 2021, I bet the price point is around $130 if they make one, but frankly, you could almost just pick up a couple pairs of these unless they are really able to update and innovate for the Wild Horse 7. Bottom line, $97, that's, that's a pretty good deal. Men and women, just so you know. And my conclusion on the performance of the Wild Horse 6, just a nice ride for longer days on the trails. I'm very pleased. Now I will add real quick, I still like the Wild Horse 5 for a commuter shoe, meaning you go from pavement and concrete from your apartment or your house 
two miles to the trails, do six or seven miles on the trails, and then two miles back to your house or your apartment. Still love the Wild Horse 5, frankly, but the shoe has changed so, so much from the 5 to the 6. Uh, but anyway, really, really liking the updates for longer trail running, sh trail running days in the Wild Horse 6. All right, everybody. It's not really a question of the day. We talk about shoes so much. We talk about running so much. Sometimes I like to just branch out and do something totally different. So here we go. Describe your favorite movie in three words. And I'll sign off with this. Leave the cannoli. Leave the cannoli, everybody. All right, everyone. We're tossing it back to first impressions of the Wild Horse 6 right there in case you missed it from, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. First impressions, Nike Wild Horse 6 right there, right there, right there. Onward and upward. Butter that bread. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.